Hello guys, BubbleCube here, and today I am playing Angels with Scaly Wings. Yeah, so you, you probably have a few questions and I will attempt to answer them as succinctly and quickly as possible so that we can get on with the episode, but basically yes, I know it's been a while since I've actually done any proper videos. In fact, I think the last proper ones I did was Undertale and that would have been roughly a year ago. So if you're still subscribed, I guess, thanks. But, um, anyway, um, yeah, this is Angels of Scaly Wings, it's a visual novel, and as the intro thing kind of explained what it's about, um, I can't really think of anything else that I need to say, I mean, there's things I could, but I don't really need to, so, I guess let's jump in, oh, Actually, no, there are some things I need to say. M my bad. Um, the game is out on the day that this is... This video is going live, like I'm recording this a couple of days in advance. And... If you're wondering, sort of like, oh, well, how can you be playing it if the game isn't out yet? Um, I backed this game on its Indiegogo campaign. And then, as a backup, got access to it about a week early. I have played through it and absolutely loved every moment of it. And so, I want to share it with you guys. And in this episode, I don't imagine we'll cover a lot of the game. Like, I imagine that this series is going to be incredibly long. But, um, yeah, so if you like what you see from sort of like this episode like please check out the game you can get it on Steam there will be a link in the description for you to follow whatever or you know a search of Angels of Scaly Wings into Google will probably turn you up with Steam um, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it and it's been sort of like nearly f five minutes since the video started I think, I don't know, I'm vaguely keeping track of the time. Let's actually get started. Uh, one thing I will mention is it was a pain in the ass for me to erase my old say, well, to sort of, not, I haven't like totally erased it, I've backed it up, but for me to erase my old save, it was a pain. Please enter your name. I am the esteemed, uh, bubble cube. Don't ask me why I'm esteemed. Shut up. What colour shall I be? I'm quite like cyan. Uh, no, that's very bright. Show me more. Teal. Yeah, I'll go teal. I quite like blue. It's one of my favourite colours, so. Controls. Left click or enter to advance text and select menu options. You can use space to advance text only, which is quite useful. 
Escape or right click brings up the menu, F toggles full screen, mouse wheel, page up or page down, you can view past messages and rewind. Uh, if you're sneaky, you can also choose a different op dialog option for a certain like dialog choice. Uh, you can hold or control or press tab to skip scene messages, etc, etc. Thanks, system! The year is 20XX. Only recently has humanity discovered a portal that leads into a different world, populated with a race of intelligent, talking dragons. I was one of the few to travel to this world. But maybe I should start at the beginning. It all began when we discovered a strange device in the middle of nowhere during our, one of our expeditions. A portal. It looked something like that. In fact, no, that is a picture of that. I had heard about similar technology before, though that had been more on an experimental level. From what I knew, other portals had been created in the past, and were under consideration for mass application. As for this one in particular though, we did not know who had built it, nor when, or why we found it in the wilderness where we did. What was more exciting to us was the fact that it was functional. After our first tests, we found there was someone else on the other side who was in possession of a similar portal, and our attempts at communication through letters were successful. But in the end, the machine's extraordinary demand for power meant we needed to act quickly, as we wouldn't be able to keep the portal open much longer. When we made this known to the other side, we received an unexpected reply. A letter of invitation. After some deliberation, it was decided to accept the hospitality and send a person to the other side. There was an individual who took the job almost immediately, and I'm gonna butcherize his name and I apologize in advance. Reza Izquierdo. I knew him, or rather had known him, we attended the same school, and even had a few classes together. We never really were close friends, but we talked to each other occasionally, and hung around the same crowd sometimes. However, we still went our separate ways in the end. I wasn't sure what to think about the whole thing, but he had to have known what he was doing. He certainly was brave. Either that, or just very foolish. While I wasn't sure which, his courage was applauded by others. After all, he couldn't have possibly known who or what would await him at the other end of the portal. And if he did meet someone there, who knew what kinds of intentions they might have? Not that any speculation on our part would have made a difference. When the day finally came, through he went, with applause echoing across the area, equipped only with the clothes he wore, his multi-tool, a gun, and a device on his wrist that acted as a PDA. Then, we waited. The cloud that was applauding him slowly dispersed when the enthusiasm died down, as there was nothing for us to do but wait and speculate. Approximately eight hours later, we received our first message from him. While we had assumed the portal led to, another, to a different country, or maybe on a different continent, the reality turned out to be m to be much more foreign. The situation he described to us was so outlandish, we initially took it as a joke. A very bad joke, maybe. We've even worse timing, and no punchline at all. It soon became clear to us, though, that we may have just made one of the most important discoveries since the dawn of mankind. Finding the portal had been remarkable itself, but this took it to a completely different level. From what he had described about the place, or more exactly its inhabitants, we surmised it could not be part of Earth at all. We called them dragons, because according to Reza, or Razor, I, I, I mean I was his friend, but I never learned how to pronounce his name. Um, 
that's what they were. Or at least, what they resembled most. Even though we found it hard to believe, it had been these dragons who had sent us the, all the letters. And what Reza had found on the other side of the portal was a whole civilization of them. They could talk, write books, add buildings and electricity. In many ways, their society was actually very similar to our own. So who were they? And where was this place? Could they be aliens? Our speculations led us to conclude otherwise. After all, we knew about the existence of thousands of planets, millions of light years away, that may have theoretic that may have been theoretically habitable. Yet even then we never found conclusive proof in regards to actual alien life forms. Some people brought up quantum mechanics and parallel universes, but in the end, all of this was just conjecture, and an ultimately fruitless endeavour, since we neither had the means nor the resources to explore these possibilities in greater detail. I think there's just one more thing worth mentioning before I move on. The previous isolation had been mutual. They hadn't known about any other intelligent life form beyond their own. Their portal had only recently been discovered, and was a technology previously unknown to them. And just as we had myths about dragons, they had myths about us. That was what we knew about them so far. And as interesting as learning these things and debating their cultural significance was, we didn't really know what we should make of it at all. Razor apparently was sure of what he was doing, though as he eventually let us know that they had agreed on a trade. We were there to give them a few of our PDA devices, which contained vast amounts of knowledge, dwarfing even that of encyclopedias. In return, they would supply us with generators, Overall, they didn't seem as technologically advanced as we had been, but they did surpass us in what that one aspect. Their means of generating energy seemed... sustainable. I think I just messed that word up. Oh well, sustainable. Uh, not only that, but evidently... also quite efficient. We could certainly... We certainly would be able to put technology like that to good use and trading mere past knowledge of the human race for something more... tangible... was a good call on his part. That was where I came in. My prior experience in both biology and sociology made me a good fit to deliver our PDA devices for the trade. And while in the Dragon's World, waiting for the prototypes of our generators to be manufactured by them, I would act as an ambassador on humanity's behalf. What a way to make a first impression by a display of mutual goodwill. Everyone benefits, and everyone goes home happy. All is well. At least, that was the plan. Despite the images that living, talking dragons might conjure up in some people's minds, I didn't even think of bringing a weapon for myself, considering that they were reportedly friendly and peaceful enough. There was no need for me to fear potential ill intentions like Razor did when he had stepped into unknown territory, and acting as humanity's ambassador, I had to do my best to uphold a high standard in fostering this diplomatic relationship. So in short, humanity is screwed because they're relying on me. Wh whose bright idea was that? Uh, honestly. Anyway, back to story. And when the time came for me to step through the portal, all my mental preparedness vanished. My anxiousness was fueled by all the questions lurking in my head, just as the machine char bleh, machine started to do its work. Would it hurt? Who would I meet on the other side? What if they really weren't so friendly, and just made Reza write, write those letters, with the pretense of appearing friendly? only to lure us into a den of man-eating monsters and certain doom, with us ending up as nothing more than a tasty afternoon snack. Maybe I should have brought a weapon after all. Suddenly, I felt a shiver coursing through my whole body, 
and beyond when I disintegrated, as if every cell, every atom of my body was torn from me and pulled in into a different direction. I saw darkness and light, painting patterns in the stars as I travelled, and images rapidly flashed before me of things unseen and unspoken. Both horrifying and beautiful, it was an experience unlike any other, yet over in just a split second. Then, it was dark. I could only see a patch of lighter colour contrasting with its dark surroundings as my vision started to clear. Its edges got sharper as the patch of light slowly took shape, giving me the distinguished outline of a reptilian head and an array of horns sprouting from it. It was a dragon! <gasps> no. I went for a portal to a land of dragons and there was a dragon there? Sorry. <laughs> As I could now see, a dragon, who not only had a pair of round glasses, but also wore a burgundy tie around its neck. Oh, b by the way, I'm just going to preface this with I'm not going to be trying to give different voices to different characters, because I am absolutely awful at that. So, it says who's speaking, I guess. Just, it's... it's Sorry. Uh, in the name of our people, I bid you welcome. If I may introduce myself, I am Remy, your guide and ambassador, a representative of our council. The, the dragon spoke. It was one thing to have heard and read about this, but something else entirely to have one standing in front of me, in flesh and blood and tongue. It was good that all my mental preparedness had disappeared when I was teleported, because nothing could have prepared me for this. Sorry, I imagine you might still feel the effects of the teleportation. Drowsiness or weakness is not unusual, as is fainting, and spontaneous emptying of your bowels, bladder or stomach. How would you feel? Rendered speechless. I had totally forgotten that I was shouldering the burden of representing my people to them as well. So much for being professional. But at least he gave me a good excuse for my blunder. I think I'm alright? Well, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe we should go before it gets too dark. Come with me, please. So I followed the dragon, not straying too far from him as the sun had already departed for the day, and the remaining light diminished by the minute. It's getting hard to see where I'm going. I'm sorry about that. But we had a good reason to schedule your arrival like this. We did not want you to be ambushed by a crowd, so we kept your... so we had to keep your exact time and date of arrival a secret. Thanks. I suppose an event like this would make me a celebrity of sorts. It would be the same if one of you came to us. That's quite an understatement. Some people here are rather superstitious. They might regard you, or any of your kind, as... divine, I suppose. Really? How so? We do have certain myths that involve humans and such. Um, I suppose the history lesson would have to wait for another time. Here we are. By this point, it had gotten so dark that I could barely make out the building before us. I briefly wondered whether they might have streetlights elsewhere, or if they just did not require any due to possible enhanced eyesight or night vision. I could vaguely see the dragon, his light colours still visible within the blackness that engulfed the area, rear up and manipulate the door handle with one of his forepaws. Oh, that's, that's oh, that's nice. Like I've, I've, um, hinges creaking. The doors, the door opened, and with the flick of a switch, the apartment was flooded with light, blinding me after all the time we had just spent without it. This is where you will live for the time being. It is fully stocked, 
but in case you need anything else, I left you a note with a few phone numbers. It is getting rather late, so I'll have to take my leave now. In any case, someone will come and meet you tomorrow morning. Mm, pardon me. Thank you, Remy. Uh, have a good night. Until we meet again. With a nod, Remy left the apartment, mindful enough to close the door behind himself. Surveying the room, I considered the events that had just transpired as my gaze met the window. I could see movement outside, and as I drew nearer, startled, I could hear footsteps in the grass moving away quickly. Assuming it must have just been the dragon, assuming it must have been the dragon I just met, I thought nothing of it as I went to bed and slowly succumbed to the sweet allure of sleep overdue. I spent a few moments thinking about my role, my mission, and what it meant to be here now. I would be nervous as all hell. I mean, as amazing as it would be to meet dragons, I would be a utter nervous wreck, so... Now, here I was, a stranger in a strange land, as I only began to feel the weight of the burden that lay upon me. The pressure of my task and the expectations I would have to meet in representing a species, culture, and civilization. So many would depend on it, yet I did not even know where the only human contact I had currently was. I was alone. Chapter 1 Inception Well, it's not the chapter 1 is Inception, the cards ha do have a meaning, but... I'm afraid I'm going to have to call it here for the end of the first episode. It ran on a little bit longer than I intend the episodes to run for, because obviously there was quite a lengthy introduction. And I also prefaced the introduction with my own, so yeah, not a lot has happened in this episode, but assuming you've watched this, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, like, this series does mean quite a bit for me. I mean, I mean, it obviously must do, because it's the first videos I've done in quite a while, but I hope that you're enjoying it because I certainly am, even if I can already feel my throat begging for the sweet release of death. Um, I will continue on recording the next episode immedi immediately, but I guess quickly actually I will show you a couple of things. First of all, you have a status screen, which you can use to recap which dragons you have spent time with, the cards give you hints as to how far... They give you hints as sort of like how you're progressing. Um, they're kind of vague, but I will explain like the ones that we see to the best of my ability. And also, there are also 63 achievements. We're not going to look at most of those because they're spoilers and stuff. But, on, like, my actual save, I have 62 out of 63. There is that specific achievement I don't have. I'm not sure how to... to well, I, I have a theory on how to get it. And the bit that I am trying to do to achieve it, I am completely and utterly stumped. And, as far as I can tell, I will need help to figure it out either someone else who has, or I may actually have to contact, like, the devs themselves, because it's a doozy. Anyway, as I did, like, another minute or two of Waffle, thank you very much for watching again, and I hope I will see you in the next episode, where there will actually you know, a game about dragons, we will actually see more than one dragon. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, 
please feel free to give it a like, and also to subscribe to our channel for more videos, and hopefully we will see you next time.